Okay, hello everybody. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining. This is Robert Gabriel, President CEO of MicroEyes Technology. I also have a few people from MicroEyes, I'm sure they'll jump in if needed. We are all here for the unfortunate cyber attack that affected your claims, your eligibility, everything that you're doing with the clearing house. Now, as you know, Relay Health is a very big company. It's owned by Optum and Optum is owned by United. So there are uh, a huge corporation and the cyber attack is ransom where a ransom demand it's a big gang in in russia they do that to very big companies and the, the gang of course is asking for ransom and the of course they're trying to blackmail the company for compromising the identity of many of the patients were involved in the hack so there's nothing you can do i'm sure the fbi and homeland security uh, is involved as this is a very big gang and affecting the many things affecting your payment affecting compromising the identity of many patients and hepa and all of that there's nothing that me or you can do at this moment so that what i think that you should do is you should not try to submit a claim to see if it will go through or not because you are compromising more data by every time you try because we don't know how much the hackers are in control of their communication what we've done is we created a page on our website to give you the the update if there's clear or not so michael if you want to share your screen and show the page of what what people will be looking for on MicroWise. Of course. A lot of people just joined. So we were talking about the hack that Relay Health is, Change Health is getting, which is including Relay Health and Capario and so many other entity. It's affecting your claims, it's affecting eligibility, it's affecting so many things. And the, the cyber attack is a ransom attack. Ransom means they're demanding money from the company. Otherwise, they will compromise the identity of the many patients that they got hold of and so many other things. So I'm sure at this moment, uh, the FBI and the Homeland Security is involved as it's a foreign entity that's attacking us. And I would advise that you don't submit claims. You don't try to communicate with the cleaning house in any shape or form by trying to send a claim or trying to check eligibility. And if you have automatic eligibility, I will turn it off uh, until it clears and we going to have something on our website that we can tell you the status of the, the claim. We'd love to talk to you, but it's not going to do any good by you staying on hold because there's so many people are calling and to tell you that we don't have any news yet. So what we're doing is on our website, we're going to have a status that tells you well, what's going on. Yeah. So if you go to the MicroWise website and then you go to the company and then you go to blog, the first article you'll see right here on the change healthcare outage, as soon as you click on it, it does have a little bit of understanding of what's going on. And then there's a change healthcare status page right here. If you click on that link, it'll take you and it'll let you know what the status is. You can also subscribe to update if you would like, if you don't feel too comfortable getting updates from here on a microwise website, but you can just consistently come to the microwise website. Of course, we'll definitely keep you updated, but this is the page where you want to always check. Like Robert mentioned, don't try to go to connect center. Don't try to do anything that you would typically do. Just come here and then go to the blog section. And then the first article about the change healthcare cyber attack, and then just look for the updates here and that page gets updated as we hear more and again you can subscribe to updates if you feel like this is something that you would want of course if you chose to stay with change healthcare so what can you do now because nobody can sustain not getting paid for a month most insurance company will accept paper claim and some will accept even a fax so now the question is would it be the red form would it be the form so if you want to send it the best thing is to call medicare because every state is different every the locality can be different. I will give them a call and ask, would you accept the facts? What's the facts that I can send to? Would you accept the paper claim? Does it have to be the rich form or the black and white that prints out of Medisoft? So there's every insurance is going to be different. Now, commercial, of course, they will take the black and white. The only one that is subject for the red is Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Those are the usual ones that they do the, the red form. So the red form is nothing more than these special scanners that scans the forms and process the claim. It makes it easier for them. So if you're going to send it by mail,
email, you have the red form, go ahead and send it on the red form for Blue Cross Blue Shield, Medicare, Medicaid. If you don't have the red form and you don't feel like going buying it, then go ahead and give them a call and find out if they will take a fax and if it's which form is required. So you don't want to hold on your claims. You want to send them because that's going to affect your cash flow. So go ahead and send them. Paper takes longer and I'm sure the insurance company is going to take longer time because there's at least 40% of the physicians in the nation are affected by this. Change Health is a huge company and it's not just that. So even if there's so many different claims, a lot of houses, they take your claim but send it to change health. So maybe some doctors out there might not be sending to change health, they're sending to Trizado or many other brands, but Trizado might be sending certain claims to change health. So this is a big problem because I, I don't know exactly how many physicians is affecting, how many patients is affected, but it's on the news everywhere and there's nothing we can do. So the advice is not to submit any claims until you see the status is clear, like we tell you that it's safe to send because every time you try, we don't know if your data is going to get compromised by trying to connect to them. Uh, and you're putting load on their server by keep on trying. So when they're trying to fix the problem and restoring, it's probably stressing their server even more by trying to connect. So my advice is not to submit any claims electronically until you hear us telling you, go ahead, we're linking the status of the page. Oh, Michael, you want to show it again? Yeah, okay. of course. So you go to microwise.com and you're going to go to from the menu to the blog and we have a blog to talk about this. So under company, we go to blog and the first article, which will always remain there. And then the link right here, which is staying up to date with the outage. If you click on it, this is where it will guide you. So we're advising everybody to submit paper and some insurance company might even take faxes. So you don't have to mail anything, but you need to call the insurance company and ask them which is the best that we can send. Is it paper? Is it fax? If it's going to be paper, some of them might need it on the red form. If you don't have any in the office, you can buy it from Amazon. So that's the standard CMS 1500. Is there any special form that we need? Yeah, it's usually the 1500 and it, the one with the QR code. Don't get the one without the QR code because that's the one that accommodates the ICD-10 codes. So it should have a QR code to the top left. If it does not have a QR code, that means it's the older form. You want to make sure that you get the red form that has that. If you do end up printing a regular black and white form, the system actually prints the QR code for you. Now, not every yeah. insurance company needs a form. That's Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Those are the ones yep. that we know for sure. Yep. It will make it easier for them to scan it through the scanners and yep. that might speed up you getting paid. So now they have to take your paper because this is a national disaster. This is not something that you chose not to do. This is emergency and under emergency things are being exception. So this is yep. an emergency and the insurance company will take your claim and I'm sure any timely filing can be art that it was not your fault. So I would create a document for letter for timely filing sample. If if you guys need help with that, we'll put it on the blog as a sample for timely filing appeal. And, you know, we'll put it there somewhere on the page for the blog. Anybody has a question, please unmute yourself. We actually have... We actually do have questions. I would encourage people, like everybody that's attending, to just type your questions if you don't mind. So we can read them out loud to everybody and then tackle one question at a time. Okay, Kevin, so, uh, you, you're my master for the... <laughs> sure. Absolutely. So we'll start at the top here. We have a question from Mark that says, why can't we change clearing house to EMEDEX without enrollment? Like I it's think they mean a Prima CGM is yep. doing. Yep. Okay. So who's doing, so, who's doing conversion without enrollment? So I think if, if I'm understanding the question correctly, there is a crosswalk that if you're coming from like Medisoft or Litec, to go to a Prima and you're using Change Healthcare, for example, they did have that crosswalk where they basically, they were like the middlemen to route claims on your behalf to clearing houses or to payers. But that's assuming that Change Healthcare was active. But now that Change Healthcare is not active, the change is completely different. You're actually, you're decommissioning service with Change Healthcare and then enrollment has to be done as if it's a brand new enrollment. Question, so, can we send it directly to the insurance company? You can, which Robert mentioned, you you can definitely contact insurance companies and then you can, they definitely know they're aware of the outage and they're aware of, you know, so the situation we have to that's contact, happened. So we have to contact yes. every insurance company 
And you do because they're all different from every state and every insurance requirements are different. Like Robert mentioned, like some can take the red form, some can take faxes, some can take print. You know, it's, I, I doubt somebody will take an email, but if somebody can take faxes, then that would be wonderful that you can just get those out quickly and, and the file just goes. You don't have to do what any about them in the Kiev? What about them in the Kiev? Medicare is definitely, it's usually the hardest part. Medicare, Medicaid, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield, they're the ones that typically would require a red form. Historically, they would not allow paper unless you get an exception for a volume of your practice. But like Robert mentioned, during a, a, a disaster, like that's happening right now, usually red tapes get lifted and they want to, pro you know, they would process claims. And again, if you would want to call the insurance just to be on the safe side and make sure it, it fits your state and it fits your office and you find out what the best way to send claims. But now you show that claim form, the new one, which have the QR. I yes. have left over in my office a big bunch of the HECFA 1500, which okay. doesn't have the QR. Can we use yeah, it? They because... will not take, no, they need the, the QR code because the QR code has the layout of the ICD-10 code. So they used to be horizontal, now vertical or vice versa. I don't necessarily so remember. That's and the second, form also. because of the emergency, they might take it, but you're taking the chance of delaying your claims yeah. further. But no, normally the QR code helps them with the scanning and yeah. process the claim faster. So yeah. a, a bunch of claims might be, you know, $20. Do you want to take the risk? I would go invest the twenty dollars and buy more forms, just not to hold and delay the claim, just in case they do want the QR code. Or you can call them and ask them if yeah. they tell you no, we don't need it. Then go ahead, use what you have. And just to it's add to that, Doctor, just to add to that, Doctor Shaker, there is the the minus the QR code. The that form does have twelve ICD ten codes. So if you're billing or if you're sending procedure codes that you're documenting twelve codes. The form you have only shows four, so you might not get paid as you would typically get paid because so it's better. Four it's better to get the new one and forget 100%. about the old one. You you want to have your claims. You want to have your claims to be as bulletproof as possible, so you can avoid you know getting put aside, and you know we'll get to them later because they don't meet the requirements. You want to so. so yeah. So we get yeah. 500 of that. The new form was a QR form. The, again, be, yeah. And it's, it's only Medicare and Medicaid. So if your volume is pretty large with Medicare and Medicaid and Blue Cross, then you most likely will need the red form. But if you call them, they say, we don't really care. Just send your claims. Or you, if you fax them, then it doesn't really matter if it's a red form because the regular white paper will be printed and it won't get to them in color. So that would be even better. But again, every insurance will, will tell you what to do. Okay, so back to square one, that they will give us hard time anyway, because they will play the game. Uh, I really hope they won't. I mean, it's, I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> my experience with them is horrible. They used to uh, claim they never use, never receive it, or they received yeah. it after the due time or anything like that. So now for yeah. them is a good excuse. I'm sorry, we'll can I jump in and ask a question? Because I was the one that asked the question about e-medics. Have you... Have you spoken with the medics? Because remember, because I own my Metasoft, I use you guys for MicroWise. I also yep. have a Prima CGM. CGM or Prima is the parent company of Metasoft, okay? Correct. And my rep at a Prima was telling me that they have spoken with the medics and they're in the process of doing a crossover that you don't need to do enrollment and they can get the claims out the door. The the crossover, my understanding of crossover, and, and Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, if I must, I don't know if this is, it pertains to this specific period because of the cyber attack, but before, which we've used, they will just facilitate I, claims. Michael, I think I, I read something about that. It's, so, it's happening. You guys need yeah, to well, contact so what's happening? Them. Okay, what's <laughs> happening is eMedics is used in the back end to send the claim to change up. Exactly. So you're contracted with eMedics and it sends in the back door to change health. So what they yes. did, they, they rerouting that to another carrier, to another clearing house without right. you having to do any enrollment. Okay. So that's their eMedics. They rerouting it instead of using the change help, they're using something else in the background because oh, really? you, we already have your enrollment with them. Now we, there's no such a thing that we are aware of that you can, we can switch a clearing house without enrollment. We never heard of that, but we okay. will double check to make sure that this is, it's not as easy. It's not that easy to, I hope it's that easy. I wish there's no enrollment because enrollment is a pain in the neck. Correct. Uh, Thank you. I, yeah. what you. I think what you're talking about is them, 
they rerouting the e medics to outside of processing change out to something else. Yeah. Okay. All right. The, Kim, the next question. Yep. The next question that we have on here is from Al. It says, are we going to have to keep paying for services if we are not receiving any services? That, I think that's the least of my problem. It's just, you know, I'm sure we can get you credit. But honestly, I think it's the least of my problem is the $100, $120 a month. But we for sure, money is money. We will get you credit for the time that you done. Okay, great. Okay, next question. Yep, the next question we have is from Jean. It says, what date do we have to go back to in regards to printing claims? Okay, that's a great question. I would go back as, Michael, when did the hack start? It was last Monday. So we're looking at date. So it started the 19th. That's when the original outage of ISPs across the U.S. started happening. And then later that day, that's when Change Healthcare reported outages. So I would go back as far as the 19th. If you do have Medisoft or Lytic, I mean, most of you guys do, you can always check your billing date and you look at the last date that you've sent claims and then you can just go based on that. But if you're unsure, even if they're duplicate, just if they're duplicate, they won't pay them. If you're not entirely sure, you can go back even a week older, but the outage did start on the 19th of February. So it's at two weeks as of today. Now, Kim, what's the service that uh, you log in and you see your claims from different sources? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. There's like a portal that you log in and, and you get to see your claims from different sources. Instead of logging into the clearinghouse or logging into each pair, there's, uh, there's a centralized portal. Okay, I'll, I'll get you that name. There's the portal that a lot of physicians are enrolled in where they get to see, maybe they don't see all the payers, but they see the major payers. They get to see if a claim made it to the payer. So if you have a way to log into the payer portal, I will check before the 19th to see if they're, you know, if they received, maybe you submitted the claim on 15, but the clearinghouse did not submit to your claim yet. So I, I would be very cautious about any things that can get lost that you're not getting paid for. So you need to, to pay attention to anything that didn't make it to the payer yet. So try to log into the payer, not to the clearinghouse. The payer means the insurance company and see if you can get into the portal of the insurance company to see the status of your claim. But if you don't have the clearing house available online, what we have for you, how can we get to the insurance company portal itself? So each insurance company has a portal that you can check on their claims. So the clearing house is, is a centralized that communicates with the clearing house, the payers on your behalf. But you can technically get into the to the portal of the payer. Kim, is every payer has a, a portal or more or less? I don't think I've come across many payers that don't have a portal anymore. Most of the ones that would not have one would most likely just be very small, very specific payers. But you know, all of Aetna, United Healthcare, Blue <coughs> Cross Blue Shield, Medicare, every all of those big carriers, they all definitely have portals where you can find that information. So when I'm you, so, I'm sorry to jump in again. How are you not telling everyone here through it in United Healthcare, you can electronically upload all your HICFA forms that you're talking about, they do not have to be mailed. You can upload them through your portal and you don't have to wait for the mailing and do the postage or anything. You do know that, right? No, I didn't. We did not know that. So are you saying that you can <laughs> upload the file? Yeah, the you can into Ability. So Ability, you have Cigna, Aetna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Ability, go on. ability is the, one, the portal that I was thinking of. Thank you. Yeah, Ability. If you log there you can electronically upload all of your claims automatically right online. What for so on, on Availity, can you also, you can upload Cigna and Evernorth claims as well? Each, it varies by state, but like for, we're in New Jersey and my guy Mark is on the phone. He, My guy Mark is on the call as well. He could give you a little more info on that, but I know... At least 70% of our carriers, we can do it through online portals. But is it right. like a PDF format or it's a, a PDF? A PDF, yeah. As long as you have the claim form in a PDF format, you upload it right into your portal. So if you log in, if you have a login to Ability, you can upload, you can create a file sending your claims to that P file in a PDF format, then you can take that PDF and upload it to Ability. Is that what you're Correct. saying? Correct. Because the, the, the fear factor of mailing it, these insurance companies are going to take piles of them and throw them in the garbage and say they never got them. 
<laughs> that's exactly what you used to do before. And that's what I just mentioned a few minutes ago. So my question now, thank you for bringing up this. So my question now, we have to do every claim on one of those red claim forms with, with the QR code. Now, uh, right? Dr. And Dr. Both. Shekner, if Ma what Mark is saying that you can upload the file, then you don't need to mess around with the form. What do you mean? Up I'm not so sure. You're, what up you're uploading it electronically. You don't need to use the CMS 1500 form. And Exactly. And you don't have to do every claim separately. You can do a bunch of claims and you can print them. And then these get printed to a PDF printer and okay. that file gets one big upload over and that's it. Okay. How, how can we get that, that, that um, form? Okay. How can we your get form? It? The form is in your computer. It's part of Medisoft. So Kim, if we, if can you just take down Dr. Shaker's yeah. information and then let's make a ticket for support so they can. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't and... know anything about computer period. And Robert knows that. <laughs> so totally you are telling fine. me some kind of miscellaneous now. So That's don't right. mind. I let Amal call you and you guide her for That's that. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Just That's a, fine. Uh, Whatever works. Mark, thank you so much for sharing. That's very valuable information. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, so, so okay. basically this is, will be, we don't need to get the form, the new form, right? That's what you say. Yeah. But uh, you, yeah. Uh, uh, we, you have to be able to log into ability. So hopefully. And what's ability? The access what, what? to log in. Okay. What is ability? That, uh, that's a lot of Ability is like a portal that communicates to the insurance company. It's almost like a clearing house, but it's a separate mm -hmm. subscription. Do we yeah. have to yeah. enroll in that? You, you might to? That's something you guys have to do. You might be, yeah. Huh? But if you don't, you have. If you, you might be, but if you don't, you'll probably have to get enrolled. And that's not something that we typically would know or you know do okay and mark or anybody on the call do you that deals with the ability do you do you pay for it or it's a free service it's twenty dollars a month twenty dollars a month okay is any commitment like a year or so i don't believe so no it depends what plan you have but yeah it's anywhere from right 20 to anywhere from thank you 39 because yeah. as of today i'm retired i was telling robert that which is a yes, disaster I, I that, dr said we will take care of uh, your you know some of your stuff offline because I, we have a lot of questions we need to get to. No right, problem. So. I'll tell Amal to call you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Kim, you want to go to the next? Hi. Hi, Robert. Yeah. Do you have any hunch as far as when this problem might be fixed? Nobody. I would be a part of the hackers if I uh, know that answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, and, nobody knows that. And the availability thing that somebody talked about, Mark talked about. So we would create the paper forms that looks like HICFA, and then we can upload that file on the availability. Is that correct understanding or are we? That's correct. Yeah. So we are not uploading some electronic file with just some digits or anything. We are actually uploading uh, HICFA forms that we would print onto availability. You correct. print it out from okay, Metasoft, so you can print it out. And one more question. Do we have to upload individual files for individual companies or do we upload everything in one place at on availability? Like Cigna, we have to do it separate, Medicare separate, Medicaid separate, or is it just one big folder and it can go with all the forms? Each it's insurance and each separate. So, okay, got you, yeah. got you. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I was told, and obviously you guys know better, but I was told it wouldn't have to be like piecemealed like that if we get the batch file. That's good to know. That's good to know. I mean, if that's true, I mean, that would be... I think that would... the difference with this is that if you're doing batch file uploading on Availity, you are effectively using Availity as the clearinghouse. What Mark is talking about is a slightly different service where you can submit your claims directly to the carrier, which would be a separate. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because ability also act as a cleaning house. So you're using yeah. it as a portal. So you need to to upload each file separately. Thank you, Kim. Okay. But if ability is okay. your cleaning house, then that's a different story. Are we going to have any issue using revenue management as our scrubber? No. Okay. Nope. Cool. Revenue management, I think that's it, it's a good segue for the next question. Um. So I'm going to just jump on that one, Kim. This question yeah. is from Josefa. I mean, say, can you let us know how to disconnect the connection to change healthcare revenue management on a local server? Change healthcare does not have any direct access to you. It, it, change healthcare on your server is is not more than a password and a login, which I'm, our guess is once their service is back up, either their passwords will completely change and they'll let your practice know. But there is no communication between you and change healthcare. There's no active connection 
unless you physically actually send claims out. And that's when the file goes out. They have no contact of coming to you. They have no way of, of doing anything directly to your data, to your Metasoft, to your revenue management, to anything like that. It's just a simple username and password. And that's about it. And those were completely decommissioned. They cut off the connection on their side. So you don't have to do anything on your side. So if that is one of the questions that you guys, I think that came up a couple of times. You don't have to worry about change healthcare, so when that touching Metasoft. So, so since there's no integration, it would be decommissioned and have nothing to do with our Metasoft. But how does, what is the connection then? The connection is basically just a website. Yeah, it's just a website that your claims go to. It's just a mailbox uh, that I, your claims. I was going to say, what is the connection? Or was there, did the hack have any connection? Like one healthcare I as well because I know now change healthcare you know that one healthcare ID system it's well change healthcare does have a lot of subsidiary companies so it could be one of them I am not entirely I'm not familiar with that name but if they're a part of it then yeah they just cut out connection across the board on their side just to make sure that no matter like just like everybody's trying to get to their website and there's it's just radio silence there's no connection whatsoever to your database and whenever you know if you try to go anywhere it's just not going to go anywhere because that link is probably decommissioned your username and password are probably decommissioned until further notice so depending on how they come up and when they come up not sure what security measures they'll have in place if the link has changed or if the username and password have changed but that's something that will probably be communicated to you admin as a provider as a biller as so that that's remaining to be you know seen as soon as they come back up the next uh, that we have here is from diane it's saying that when she's trying to send her electronic claims to paper change them over it's not printing and it's getting error messages. So we can open a ticket for you, Diane, if you need assistance with that. Yep. And okay. Then the and then the next one is, that we had oh, after that. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Mike. No, no, I'm so uh, sorry. This no, is no. also from Al. Is Medisoft set up to print on the red forms if we insert that type of paper? Yes. Mm -hmm. Your red form should be a list. It, when you print your claims, once you go to print send and they ask you to pick, uh, you pick electronic or paper, you click paper and then a list of forms will come up. The form that you're looking for is called CMS 1500. 12 dash or slash two. Um, this is the form you want. If you are looking to print on regular paper, which is white and, and the text will come out in black, it's exactly the same form, which is CMS 1500. Um, I'm losing track. 212. Uh, 212, <laughs> I'm sorry. And it's going to say with form. You have three sets of those. You have a primary set, you have a secondary set, and you have a tertiary set if you happen to process tertiary claims. And the next set we have is from Katie saying she needs to know how to change electronic claims to paper claims. And is there an easy way to retrieve submitted electronic claims and change to paper without re-entering? If you're using Medisoft, it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is select go to your claim you you want to open the tutorial data and, and just show oh, that works too. everybody how to turn electronic claims, a bunch of electronic claims to paper. I'll go on to the next question since it doesn't need to be previewed. It's from Al. How do we turn off auto eligibility? There should be an icon on your desktop on the server or in the taskbar. It's a little mini computer. All you have to do, just simply right click on it and just click shut down. And that will stop the auto eligibility. If you're unsure, just please call us and, and we can do it for you. It takes two seconds, but um, it's, it should be running on your server and there'll be like a little mini computer that has green on it. Right click and click shut down. It's going to ask you to confirm yes or no. And you want to say yes. And that will kill the connection for your eligibility going out every night. We answered Dr. Shaker's question about the old forms. Do you think when e-faxing the black versus the HICA form would matter? This question is from Sutrin. No, you don't. It doesn't really matter if it's black or red at this point, because once it goes over a fact, I think unless their fact is colored, then which I highly doubt. I mean, don't quote me, but I highly doubt a fact will go as color. It won't matter. So you can use the black form. And again, it's within Medisoft. You can use that. And unless you want to go the ability route, which you can submit your claims online via PDF, if that would help instead of your printing, that would be also another option for you. And Diane actually just added a comment that says, I think you can get into Connect Care to check claims that have been sent. I'm not sure if you mean Connect Care, Connect Center. Diane, Connect Center is not functioning unless this Connect Care is a different website. If you would elaborate on that comment, that would be great. If you want to add a comment to it, that would be amazing. Let's go back to Kim to show us how to mark claims from electronic to paper. So they can be processed. So I'm showing our trial Medisoft database right now. So we're going to be starting in the claims management uh, window, which is our second icon on the top. 
from here, this is going to show you all of your claims, whether they're sent or still waiting to be sent. So from here, you can use your list only where you can filter for different things. If you want to look for a certain billing date or a certain insurance carrier, you can absolutely do that from here. However, they do make it pretty easy to be able to send those claims back out and switch them over if you need to. So for example, I'm actually just going to pull up some ready to send claims here. So we can see there's quite a few here that are actually done. They're paper, electronic. I can use my shift key, just like you would on your Windows computer, and highlight a selection of claims. From here, you can go under your change status button where you can change them from any status to ready to send. And you can also take them from here from electronic to paper. And then you can choose if you want it for a specific carrier, let's say only primary. And when you say OK, it's going to change all of those guys over. And these are now ready to be printed on paper for you. Now, you just be careful if it doesn't print, count them, you might have to do a reprint because paper sometimes yeah. is easy to reprint it. I'm going to jump a couple questions down real quick because it pertains to this. This question is from Sharon. It says, what does the paper claim form look like that needs to be uploaded? The one created through Meditalk. So Kim, can you just preview a claim mm -hmm. on the screen just so everybody can see what the form looks like? Nope. You want to go? Yep. So if you actually stay here for a second, yeah, if you stay here for a second, yep. so the one with form, this is the black and white and the one underneath it where it just says primary, this is the red form. So just... And you have, again, mm -hmm. one set of each, a primary, secondary, and tertiary. Yep. I'm just adding a filter here so that it doesn't load for five years for us to take a look at that claim form. So this is an so example of what the claim form will look yeah. like. Yeah. And that's the black and white. It's always going to be lined up. It's going to have the QR code. It's going to have the 12 diagnosis. The red form is basically just going to be text on an empty page. And then once you have the paper in your printer, those fields or those information just follow in every field that it belongs to. It could need minor tweaking depending on the printer and depending how the paper is getting fed. So if it's completely off, then you just let us know so we can help you align it. If you just need to do a regular PDF. I think this will suffice, but I am not entirely sure. I guess it depends on the insurance, but you can also, you know, just print this to a PDF. Kim, if you want to just click on the printer for a second for me. Yep. So when you click on the printer, so instead of having your printer, every computer does have a built-in PDF printer. You just click on it and then you click OK. And then it gives you an option to give it a file name so you can call it whatever the batch name, the insurance company, the date, however you want to call it. So you know what you've done so you can send it out. And that gets every claim of those 15 pages together. So you don't have to do one patient at a time. Okay. Next question. I'm going to jump back up a little bit. I think we stopped at Ariel. How will you know if claims are rejected when sent by paper since there is not a scrubbing process? That's a good question. So your revenue management is still functioning, Ariel. So you can always scrub your claims through revenue management and you make sure that everything checks out. And then once you do that, then you change your status from electronic to paper. And that's when you go ahead and, and print them on paper. So it will give you an understanding if you have a bad code, if you have anything that needs to be fixed. But revenue management still functions and it has no contact with the outside world just yet because you haven't gotten to the claim processing side. Now, a follow so up, can... somebody might ask if I submit the claim by paper, if the insurance company rejected it for whatever reason, how would I know? That's, I think that was one of the questions. I think somebody asked that question, but it's a great question. I think I, you, I get, don't a, know how you it... get a letter. If you have a portal, like a village, you will know the status. If you don't have a portal, you will get a, a, a letter in the mail say that your claim was rejected. The next question is from Ali. Would you suggest informing patient about possible compromise of their information? If so, could you suggest a letter format? I mean, Robert, you, you might be able to answer that. I mean, uh, my take or my answer on this is I don't know the impact of the leak. And I don't think we have an official word of change healthcare saying what was compromised or what was leaked. I don't know if you want to be proactive and send that letter and freak out your patients just yet. But Robert, correct me if I'm wrong. What would you do? Would you let your patients know? No, I would. That's a clearing house responsibility. Yeah. That's... There's a HIPAA, there's a HIPAA associate agreement between you and the clearing house and the 
the clearing house is obligated to inform the patient that were affected. Next question is from, and I please, I apologize if I butcher pronouncing the name, Kiku. Can you, can an insurance company issue a check if they are using change healthcare? I have a major Medicaid AZ insurance company that cannot cut checks because of revenue management program, Mercy Care Plan. Yes. If, if you're asking if they're, if you're getting like ERAs into revenue management, you, of course, you won't be able to get that because the connection is cut off. That would be a question, unfortunately, for them to see if you can get the EUB, you yes. know, either sent to you on paper or, you know, the, the check for you. Yeah, if the portals al allows you to do that, then that would be great. But about a paper check, I don't know. That's probably a question for the insurance because they'll probably have record of those claims that were paid. Next question or comment from Dr. Grafalo. I don't know if you seem to understand the impact um, to the end users asking us to go into 34 insurance companies to check. Does Mycorrhize have any way to help alleviate the stress everyone is feeling other than do it on your own? Sorry for the stress, but we need guidance. And it, it, it is definitely not us, you know, passing the buck to, to have you guys do the work. It just, it does vary. But now that we know that you can submit to Ability on multiple insurances, I think that's that that's a sign of relief unless you know it's an insurance company that the validity doesn't cover then that will probably be your next option is to call them and see what they would say so instead of calling 30 40 i think it'll be one call to ability to see if they just cover the insurance companies that you have and if they you know if they will take those claims then there'll be a major relief for you and your practice instead of you calling insurance companies directly now if i was you i would go after the big payers i, I would go after yeah. The payers that have that I have ninety percent of my business, and, and maybe hopefully then by next week this nightmare is gone. So I would go after the big ones because those are the ones you want to pay attention to. If you pay attention to the one that has you know two percent or five percent of your business, you might be just wasting your time. Uh, I will go after the big fish first. So now to the EOB that we were talking about, you can ability can give you a copy of the EOB if you have an ability subscription, but the checks gets deposited hopefully from the insurance company to directly to your bank account. So at least you get in the money and that's not that does not go through the clearing house. But the EOB yes goes through the clearing house but you most likely can get a copy of that EOB from a village. Yeah. Right, next question. This is from Lila or Lila. Also use Navinet to check on claims and you can upload directly. So Navinet is also another option in case ability does not work for some. So keep that in mind. Navinet was the one I was looking for. The, ah. the one I was asking you, Navinet. Yep. And then for United Healthcare, you can upload directly to their portal, which I believe Mark had mentioned earlier. So that's a comment as well. There is an exchange between Bridget and I believe somebody, which I'm guessing it's where on the portal. So I'm just going to jump to questions. We took care of Sharon's question. There's a question from Sustran that says, any and all carriers on ability provide access to submit claims directly or just certain carriers? I believe Mark said about 70% of carriers. I don't know what that 70% truly covers, but that might be a question for them. They will probably be able to provide you with that answer, whether ability or Navinet, whichever one you choose to proceed with. This question is from Jean. So what happens currently after we process revenue management? I don't know what you're referring to. If you don't mind adding a comment to that question, just explaining to us a little bit more what you're looking for. Diane, yes, we will reach out to you. Thank you for that. Can we have Diane to get a ticket for them? Dr. Parikh, revenue management, is, this also, is, it, is that also disconnected? I'm not getting any reports from revenue management. Yes, we're sending and receiving reports. Everything is completely down. So you will not get anything back. And of course, we encourage you not to send claims, please, just until this, you know, situation is over. I have a question. I just don't have access to type it. Sure, go ahead. Because um, I'm on my phone. So I wanted to know if, are we able to log into NGS Connects and submit claims through them uh, for Medicare? I believe on NGS Connects, you can manually enter the information for the charges, which right. is cumbersome. But at least she'll be getting the information out there. I would, right. however, place a call to Medicare and see if they will accept paper claims in lieu of the instance that's going on. Right. Usually with Medicare, you can fax things to them if you have access to a fax or yeah. you know, virtual faxing online. They do accept things through fax, such as appeals, other things along those lines. So because of this situation, they may 
allow that to, to take place at this time. Okay. And it's still okay to verify and go through the NGS Connect for patient information? Absolutely. Yeah, that's straight with okay. Medicare. Great. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you. The next question is from Lauren. Is there any other clearing houses that we can switch to okay. temporarily? So we do have an, an alternative. It's called eMedics, which is also integrated with Medisoft. It's by the parent company, which is CGM. It has the, the auto, you know, upload and auto download of reports. So there's no manual upload to third party clearing houses that do not integrate with Medisoft through an automatic upload. I don't know if temporarily is the word I would use just because you'll have to go through the enrollment of the clearing house and, and all the payers that you're working with. And it depends on who you're working with. Somebody like Blue Cross and Blue Shield, they're a very expensive process. Uh, Medicare is surprisingly on the shorter side. So it really depends on the carrier or the payer. The enrollment process will take it course. We try to get him. We work with you and we work with your practice to make sure that the everything is filled out as accurate and as complete as possible. So we don't give him a reason to push it back and say, you know, this is not complete. And, you know, they push it back another few weeks. So we do have an alternative, which is called eMedics. And I don't know if Robert, you would like to add anything else to that. Um, no, I mean, eMedics is, is a great alternative. Now, the, the Change Health is, it's always scared me since they've been bought out by United Health. I, I think there's a conflict of interest there, but, and that's my opinion that, you know, I always afraid of conflict of interest. Like, why is the payer that pays me is owning the channel that I submit the claim through? There's a conflict of interest, but eMedics is a great alternative, but everybody is vulnerable to cyber attack. The process of enrolling is, is huge and it, it's a lot of paperwork. And can you imagine going through all this paperwork and the other one gets cleared and God forbid the, uh, you know, eMedics gets hacked, you know, next month and you back to, it's not something that you just wake up in the morning and you flip a switch and send it to something else. It's not like I'm shipping today through FedEx. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to ship through UPS. It's, yeah. it's a lot of, there's a lot of enrollment. Uh, and speaking yeah. of everybody's vulnerable to a cyber attack and hack is, you know, a little infomercial here is I want you to be aware that MicroWise has a great IT uh, department that uh, we help with uh, protecting your cyber security and the preventing a lot of the small practices that can get as far as hack and making sure your backup is not something that can be easily hacked that even if you get, ever get hacked, you can restore because a lot of hackers, what they do, they, they destroy your backup so you have no backup to restore. We making sure that your backup is secure, We're making sure that your firewall and preventing all the the any method that you can be hacked by and try to prevent this as much as possible. And also we have monitoring where we can monitor your network to make sure there's no suspicious traffic going on in your network. So that's a little infomercial. The back to the question, Mike. I think there's more of the exchange between Bridget and I'm not sure who she's communicating. I think she's communicating to everyone, but I think it's it's a specific person. So I'm going to take the next question, which is from Nancy. Can you show a brief ability and or Medicare tutorial for submitting claims? It's yeah. difficult because you we have to use a real practice data with a real patient data, and that would be a problem with HEPA. But uh, let me see what I can do where we can record it and fuzz out the inf the confidential information. Next question is from Dr. Parikh. Is there a class action lawsuit in process against United Healthcare to make providers whole due to their problems? I do not know. I, I would imagine something will, I mean, something is going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen or, or who's going to file against who, but I don't think we're at liberty to, to say or yeah, know. You know, this much is the, at least with, about all, now. with all respect to any lawyers on the call, is class action lawsuit is only benefits lawyers, you know, as much as I, I don't, uh, you know, respect the payers with all the games they play, but a class action lawsuit is you might be getting a 50 cents coupon for your next uh, McDonald's meal and the lawyers makes most of the money for class action lawsuit. So, you know, it might give you a satisfaction that they get penalized, but only lawyers benefit 
from class action lawsuit. Yeah. The next question is from Tanya. Where in Ability do we upload? So like Robert mentioned, Tanya, we're going to try to do a demo on our side and just black out information that we were, were unable to show for PHI purposes and HIPAA purposes. And, and we'll, everybody that's registered on this program, on this meeting, um, we'll send an email out with that link to make sure you see what the process looks like and then we'll post it on our website as well so you have access to it and if you know somebody that didn't attend or whatever then they can just go on and, and get it the next question is from sharon would you be willing to provide some sort of summary of options maybe email it to us or post on our website yeah absolutely sharon let me make sure Kim, do you mind taking i'm sure we actually have sharon's email can yep. we note that to send to the client care team just so they can communicate with sharon and, and give her the option Great. rita thank you for attending and thank you for you know, being patient with us, you know, not knowing what's going on is, is, is a little crazy. And we're, we're trying to be there for you and, and, and everybody to get your claims out. Dr. Parikh just left a comment saying Optum is ready to loan money at high interest rate to providers. But now the United Healthcare messed up should be loan the money with no interest. I, again, we don't know the answer to this question. Dr. Parikh, I think that's like out, outside our territory. Check updates on change healthcare. There's the ERX service for change healthcare is coming back up, which is a great sign. We just don't know when claims is going to be back up. And, and that's why we encourage you to go and, and check the status link for the services for change healthcare. But the ERX is coming back up. So that's, that's, that's a great sign of relief. You got it. Absolutely, Dr. Matera. We'll be in touch with you. Kim, can you please also take Dr. Matera's name down and, and we'll send an update for everybody on the options that we offer along with the ability uh, process for sending claims. Dr. Vadim, thank you for your time. Uh, Fatin, thank you. Uh, Robert, I think we are done with the question that came in for today's meeting. So, okay. Mr. Sarib, can I ask you one last thing? Would you of kindly course, would you kindly send like an email with a summary of the option and the name yeah, of, of those websites that sure. can be uploaded and all of that stuff? Absolutely. Because... Everybody will we're gonna work on a video for ability. And we're going to send you the names and we're going to send you the alternative clearinghouse that we have to everybody on this meeting and to our, you know, entire Metasoft Light Tech Change Healthcare client base. If whoever did not get to attend, we'll at least get the email with the information so they're, they stay informed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody to, uh, and hopefully we have better news on Wednesday. Uh, oh, sure. Thank you. And have a nice weekend.